request for 171. I've got a more out of this mess.
Good morning. God certainly is still good. I was thinking there while we were singing about the peace that uh, when it don't seem like there's any peace available, God sends a peace that's beyond understanding, as we always say. So thankful for that. I believe that uh, Danny and Macy's got a song this morning, so if you will, just come ahead.
rights. Anybody else have a song or a testimony? Before Kevin comes to run over the announcements really quick, we're going to be making apple butter this coming Saturday, and we're going to need all the help we can get on Friday at 9 a.m. to get apples peeled and all that good stuff. So uh, show up. Come help us out. Then on uh, the, the 28th is Kevin's 20-year anniversary of being our pastor. So uh, we're going to be having some events coming up in October. We'll actually have pastor appreciation on the 29th, and there will be a meal on that day. And between now and then, I'll, do, I'll have some more announcements and more details on what you can do to help with that day. And then last but not least, how many here, by show of hands, would say that you really love our pastor? That's right. And how many would say you'd do anything in the world to help him out? Well, I'm going to give you a chance tonight at 6 o'clock. <laughs> We're going to go support him at Maranatha Church. And that's uh, if you go to the Bogart's cabin in Unicoi and turn left, just follow that road. Uh, we're going to give you a chance to make good on your promise. I snapped a picture there. Everybody raised your hand. But I have seen pastors go to preach at other places, and the church just simply not support them. And I think that's tough. I know if I was a pastor, I'd want you there praying for me. And you all just said you'd do anything for him, so we'll be looking forward to a full house tonight. All right, let's pray for him as he comes. That's hard to follow right there. Ain't it? <laughs> good to be here this morning. Appreciate the Lord. It's always good to to be in the house of the Lord. And and, and JP said earlier this morning, this is a a peaceful place, and uh, it's it's a it's a place where God God's at, and God's and I know you can feel God everywhere. I know that you're saved. You have Him in your heart, and you take Him wherever you go. But there's something special about the sanctioned place of God, and uh, uh, he 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 wanted he put it in the heart of him, uh, of man to 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 build him a sanctuary, didn't he? Right. So um, it, it's a it's a special place. I've mentioned this before. I've been here, and I know a lot of you have. You come in here when nobody's here, when there's no service. And you can just feel the presence of the Lord. It's a peaceful place, ain't it? And it's just a sanctioned place. It, and uh, very thankful, uh, thankful for all that uh, God has given us. And uh, you pray for us this morning. Uh, we uh, good to have uh, Charlie Trivet with us today. What a pleasant surprise there, uh, him and Irene. I, I did ask him to uh, to preach and. Irene to sing, and they both said no, so um, I've done my best, so, uh, but it's good to have them, and uh, Charlie's pastor here for uh, quite some time, and, and uh, so uh, appreciate him. All right, uh, turn with us in uh, Matthew chapter number uh, 16, in verse number 26. Stand with us, Reverend God. Word. Well, let's let's back up twenty four. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come into the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Uh, verily I say unto you, there shall be standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. 
Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you, God, for the reading of your word. And Lord, we just pray today, God, that you get us out of the way. And Lord, you'd use us, God, for your glory and your honor. God, we just pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Speak to our hearts today, I pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What's on our heart today is, is things that money can't buy. It's on my mind. And, um, money is, is, is powerful. Money can do a lot. Get a lot of things. Uh, we, we, we hear people even say money changes everything. Uh, money changes conversations. Money changes people's minds, don't it? Money, uh, money pays our debts, don't it? We, you know, we say, I gotta have money, and and uh, I've got to, I've gotta have money to, to pay my bills, and uh, money helps us help others, don't it? Uh, money used in the right way, uh, but there are things that, that you know we we buy. We we've all got. Uh, our basement's full, and our attics are full of things that, that money has bought, and we have plenty, don't we? Um, our closets are full. Um, I mean, our, our I, I tell you, storage is, is very valuable anymore. People have so much at their homes, they're, they're renting storage buildings. That's how much uh, that money has bought, right? I'm getting to a point. And so, but there's things that money can't buy that are worth more than all that money can buy. And, and God help me today to let us think about things that we're overlooking that are more valuable than what we're focused on. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter number 12, it says that uh, for uh, beware of covetousness. I, I quote this a lot, don't I? Be, be, take heed and beware of covetousness. What's coveting? Desiring what somebody else has. We can get wrapped up in want, wanting what other people's got. And, and, and the, uh, it says, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. He goes on to speak about a, a rich man. Uh, he, uh, uh, the ground of a rich man brought forth plenty. He was a farmer. And, and he didn't have enough barns to bestow all his goods. So in other words, uh, 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 kind of like what I was talking about. We ain't got enough room to uh, uh, fit all of our stuff. So we, we, we have to get something else to, to hold it. So he said, I'll just tear down my barns and I'll build greater. Then I'll say, now he was thinking, if I get this accomplished, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be satisfied if I get to this point. In other words, I'm not happy right now, but when I get to this point, I will be. The Bible says that, he said, Then I'll say to my soul, Soul, uh, uh, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. I'm in Luke 19 now. Uh, Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. In other words, then you'll be happy. But God said, see, God's got the first say so and the last say so of this thing. Amen. But God said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself is not rich toward God. This man was wealthy. But he wasn't rich toward God. He didn't have the things that were the most important. There's things that money can't buy. Number one, money can't buy salvation. That's a price that nobody could pay. If salvation come with a price tag, the richest man or woman in this world could not afford it. But Jesus has bought us. 
The Bible says you've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit which are God's. The greatest price that's ever been paid is when a man gave his life for the sin of the world. The man and the blood of Jesus Christ has bought us. The blood, the blood is priceless. Look how the blood set me and you free. Look what the blood has changed our life. The ch- has changed us, made us a new creature in Christ Jesus because of the price that's been paid for our salvation. Now, I think about the. Uh, a lot of things uh, we that what the blood has brought is priceless. And because of the blood, we've got peace. We've got peace. There in the book of John, it says, Peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, but as I giveth unto thee. In John, John 14, excuse me. John 14, he said, Peace I give unto you. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto thee. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I am thankful today that we've got peace. And peace is something that money cannot and will not buy. There's a lot of people trying to buy peace through materialistic things. They're trying just like this man. He said, well, if I, if I tear down my barns and build greater, I, I, then I'll say to my soul, if I get this accomplished, if I accomplish this, I'll be happy. The thing of it is, if you're trying to satisfy your flesh, you'll never be satisfied. Amen. Listen at me today. The, the, the Bible says, the eye is never satisfied with seeing nor the ear hearing. You'll never satisfy this flesh. But I'm thankful there's one thing that can be satisfied, and that's the soul. The Bible says he satisfies the longing soul. It don't matter how much money you got or how little you got, you can have peace and have joy in your heart with Jesus Christ. I believe that we'd be more content, and that's something that money can't buy, contentment. Have you ever thought in your mind, well, if I get this job, I'll be content or I'll be satisfied. You get that job and you know what? Life happens, problems come, occur, and you think, well, I'm not as satisfied as I thought I'd be because it wasn't what I thought it'd be. I've never met anybody that's been to Calvary that's ever said, this ain't what I thought it'd be. I'm glad, I'm, I'm very thankful that when you come to the Lord, you come with Him nothing, and He gives you everything, don't He? Man, I, I begin to think of, uh, you know, that, that, that scripture that, that I read there just a minute ago, whosoever shall, shall, uh, seek his life, shall lose it. And shall find his life, shall lose it. But whosoever, whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, shall find it. When you get rid of this, when you say, Lord, I'm committing my life to you, then you'll find. There's a lot of people trying to find their way in the world and trying to find uh, uh, who uh, they really are, trying to find their identity, right? Trying to find their identity and, and different things. Well, if I look this certain way or if I, if I dress this certain way or if I, if I belong to this certain group, then that's my identity. But when you lose yourself and you surrender your life to God, then you'll find peace. Then you'll find your purpose in life. Then you'll find your true identity in the Lord. Amen. 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 There's a, the, the world today, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're having an identity crisis. Uh, people are trying to find themselves in, in the wrong places. And 
indulging in sinful things, trying to find their purposes. There's a preacher who preached a revival here a long time ago, preaching on uh, 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 looking for love in the wrong places. There's a lot of people that are, that are trying to find themselves, but they never find that peace. And that's all it's about. They're trying to find peace. They're trying to find contentment in all these different things that they're, that they're wasting a lot of money on. But you'll find yourself at the foot of the cross. And you'll find peace that Jesus bought and paid for. Peace that money can't buy. Something else money can't buy is love. The Bible says this, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. No one's ever loved you or ever will love you like Jesus has. Our love is a conditional love. Our love is a uh, lustful love, right? A lot, a lot of people say, well, I, 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 th- they use the word love loosely, right? As a lustful love or whatever, but uh, we, we, have, we have perverted love, really, man has. What God has, has the, the love of God and, and, and what God has, has started in, in, in loving mankind, man has perverted that love, hadn't he? But God's love is unconditional. God loves us. He knows everything about us. He knows the good, the bad, and the ugly, and He still loves you. He don't condone it. He don't condone our wrongdoing, but He still loves us. Now, we, on the other hand, when we, we always love the good side of people, but when there's a bad side, we find out about, and let me say, everybody has got a bad side. We don't like everybody to know that because we're holier than thou, and we're this, that, and the other, but... We all have a bad side. We all got our faults and failures. But I ain't you glad he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. But a lot of people, when they find out your bad side, they don't want to have nothing to do with you. That's not an unconditional love. I've hurt my mom and daddy. I've said things, done things, and I've broke their heart. I have come to the point where I realize that I messed up and I, when I got off my, my pride and, and rebellious little spell that I had and I said, I'm ashamed. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for what I've done. My daddy looked at me and he said, I forgave you the moment you did it. And I've never forgotten that. And I, I, I've, that's the love of the Father. That's the love of the Heavenly Father that my Father has in His heart. Amen? You think about the love that God's had for us. First of all, he loved you when you was unlovable. Amen. Amen. The world didn't see much potential in you, but he did. But he loves you with an unconditional love. But you think about it. Once he saved you, you still ain't done everything right. You still ain't said everything right. You still ain't acted every way you should have because you're in this flesh. He didn't save your flesh, he saved your soul. But ain't you glad he still forgives you? Never has he, nor yet he ever will condone your sin. 
But ain't you glad he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But his love he puts in you. When you get saved, you've got his love now. And that's the love that he wants you to love your spouse with. He wants you to love one another with his love. Little John, it sums up the love of God and how we are to have the love of God toward one another. Not just our family, but one another. Even those that are unlovable, we love them. Don't have to love their ways, but you got to love their soul and love, amen, and pray for them. And, and so money, money can't buy love. Money can't buy the the, the respect. If you, you ever, if you ever think, well, I'll win them over if I buy them this or buy them that. And you'll gain somebody's respect by being the godly person that you need to be. Man. And it might not be right then and there. Let me say, young people... When I was in high school, uh, I didn't fit in. I didn't, I didn't go camping on the weekends with, 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 with the fellas because I knew what they were doing. They were things that, that, that I know was wrong that they were doing and I know better. But, I, I, buddy, I, I, caught, I caught flack over it. It was made fun of. And... Uh, didn't you know, there was there was certain people that, that they didn't they don't have nothing to do with me and and and, and I, I I kept thinking it ain't worth it it ain't worth me giving in and trying to fit in and going against what I know what's right and wrong it ain't worth it but make a long story short. Down through life at the end. Well, even I even seen it on graduation day. We were graduating high school. There's people come up to me and said, thank you for being you. And I looked at them and they said, you, you, didn't, you didn't just fit in. You, 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 you stayed true, basically. And your true character... It's who you are when nobody else is looking around. Man, you put on a front, you put on a show, you can be a doorknob wherever you go, but people won't have confidence in you. What's a doorknob? Whichever your turn, that's the way you're going to do. You're with a Christian crowd, you'll go that way. You're with a, the, 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 the cussing crowd, the, 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 the worldly crowd, you'll, you, if you're turned that way, you'll go that way. The Bible says a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Man. So we need to think about our character. Money can't buy your character. Money can't buy respect. You'll earn respect. You may think, well, I'm not being respected. But in time, your consistent, your faithfulness to God you will be respected, I promise. Them people that laughed at me and them people that made light and said, we don't want to go with him. There's some hunted with me and some wouldn't because they know I wouldn't put up with their mouth and wouldn't put up with their, their cussing and all. And They said, well, I don't want to hunt with him. I said, that's fine. But down, down the road, them same people respected me. Now, I'm not putting myself on a pistol. I've made many a blunder. But what I'm saying is you will earn respect. Money won't buy respect. You can try to buy people over, win people over. Money can't buy respect. Am I making sense today? And all the, the things that Money can buy the most priceless, valuable thing that we possess. 
is what we have in the Lord and our fruits and our, our, your name, your name, it's worth a lot. Your reputation is very valuable. A good name is rather to be chosen above riches, rubies, and precious valuables. If you don't have a good name, you don't have a good witness. If all if if you've got a name of not being somebody who you say you are. That reflects not only on you, but your family, your church, your pastor, your community. Amen? Everybody around you. I mean, if somebody says, well, well I saw that person drinking, and I, I, well, I thought they went to Southside. They let that go on down there? You see what I'm saying? Well, I heard that person cussing. Well, that person, I, 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 Kevin Laws is our pastor. He allow, he, he allow that go on down there? You see what I'm saying? He, you drag everybody else around. You, you, you say all day, what I do ain't nobody's business. And listen, I don't think I'm just preaching to young people. I'm pre, I, hey, every, all of us need to think about our character. Are you trustworthy? Can somebody trust your name? Your, your word, can, can, can they trust your word? You say, I'm going to do this or that, or that, or can they trust you? Are you truthful? I mean, it, it's sad to hear somebody say, you know, so-and-so, they, I don't, I, I can't believe a word to say. I'm like, wait a minute, that's, that's somebody that goes to church. That's a leader in the church. Or that's, a, that's somebody that does something in the church. How sad it is to have a name of you can't trust them. Money can't buy your word. Money can't buy. But how do we live up to all this? See, you you may think, well, well preacher, you're pre preaching unrealistic uh, goals. Uh -uh. You live for Jesus, you'll have the fruit of the Spirit, and you'll 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 be the character you need to be. You'll be faithful. You'll love one another. Amen. You'll forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. Amen. You'll you'll uh, you'll you'll be the witness in the world. That you need to be. Think about the, the rich young ruler. He come to Jesus. I mean he had what money could buy. But he was still coming up short. That's why he came to Jesus. Because there's a missing piece in a puzzle. Nicodemus was living to the law. To the T. But still there was a missing piece to the puzzle. You see what I'm saying? You do it your way. You're going to come up empty anyway. When you live the life that God wants you to live, you walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust thereof. <coughs> and when you live for God, God will bless you. And in the long run, you will be, you will be respected. You say, well, I make mistakes. I make blunders. And I think of, some of the people that's had a big impact in my life, I know their weaknesses. I know their failures. David has been a big impact on my life and no doubt millions of people. He was a man after God's own heart, but he messed up. Ain't it funny how that one mistake can make everybody forget about all the positive but I like to read there in the book of Psalms 51 I believe it is where he said 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore, and I respect people when they say they're wrong. I have more respect than somebody that admits when they're wrong than somebody that will never admit it. That makes sense? Some of the hardest, one of the hardest things that I've ever tried to do or a task that I've took on is being a parent. I don't always do everything right. My youngest don't shout me out back there now. <laughs> Daddy don't always handle everything like he should. But when I don't handle things like I should, I apologize to him. You say, well, that's, that's a sign of weakness. No. It's a sign of strength. To admit when you're wrong, when you've handled things the wrong way, going about things. Now, you parents don't look at me like a, I'm the only one up here that's ever handled anything. Like you didn't want to take your youngest head off. <laughs> uh, yeah, or choke them. But, but I want them to know that Daddy don't know, do everything right, but Daddy, at the end of the day, Daddy wants to, to be the godly father that he, God wants him to be. Amen. Yeah. And my goal is one day my youngins will look back on their raising Amen. and they will look at me and Tiffany and, and say, I respect my parents. Even though they do now, but you respect your parents and your raising when you get older, don't you? Amen. And I'll tell you, you really... You respect them more when you get children of your own, don't you now? You're very thankful for your raising more so when you get children of your own. I called my dad two years ago, and I said, to, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. He said, for what? I said, for every time that I talked back to you, for every time that I looked at you and kind of was looking out in space like I was ignoring what you were trying to tell me, like that you were old school, that you didn't know what you were talking about, and he just started <laughs> laughing. He said, this too shall pass. He said, I'm watching you raise, uh, uh, growing up all over again. But I respect my, my, my dad, and that's my goal is to earn the respect of my youngins. And you know what? Sometimes the love that I have for them, it's tough love. Tough love. I can't condone everything and go about everything, but I, I tell them when they're wrong. And I, I didn't like to be told I was wrong. Law have mercy, stubbornness. But I look at my daddy and my mama now and I thank them. Yes, I do. I thank them. So respect is something you earn. And priceless is your virtue in the Lord. What you have in Jesus Christ and your, your witness to people. Your witness. People's watching your life. There's lost people that looks looks up to you. There's people that don't live right, that are not living for Jesus. They're watching your life. So that's a reason to keep on keeping on for Jesus. Man, that's a reason just to keep on keeping on. These are priceless things. You lose trust. Trust is something money can't buy either. You lose trust, and sometimes you won't get it back. 
You might expect it back. You may say, well, if they'd have a love of God in them, they ought, to, they ought to gain my trust back. Sometimes you won't gain people's trust back when you lose it. That's just the way it is. So be, oh goodness, so be, be who, be trustworthy, right? Be faithful to your spouse. Be faithful to your spouse because sometimes you lose that trust in a marriage, you'll never get it back. Right? Be, be trustworthy to your children. When you tell them you'll do something, do it. Do it, right. Amen. Right? When you say yes to something, stick with it. When you say no to something, hey man, stick with it. Right? Be consistent. Be consistent. Love one another as Christ has loved, loved you. Forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. Priceless. Things are priceless. There's been times in my life money could not help me. Money, if you'd have laid a million dollars down there, there, all the three times I've been diagnosed with cancer and said, right, here's you some money. It wouldn't have helped me. But them evenings, I get off by myself somewhere, get down in the basement, get in the closet, and get on my knees and get in the calling out to God, and I get peace. It passes all understanding. There's where the money was. <laughs> There's where the value was, Right? So what's what I'm saying? Works in your heart. The Bible says what profit a man, though he gained the whole world. If you're here today and you're lost, what profit do you have? All that, that the world can ever hold. And you lose your, lose your soul. What do you mean by losing your soul? Going to an awful place called hell. what should a man give in exchange for his soul? The rich man, he lifted his eyes in hell. That means he is still lifting his eyes. That's present tense. So he is still lifting his eyes. So he would give everything that he owned in this life for one drop of water right now. That's what money means to him now. Is that right? Does that, does that make sense? So your career, your, your, your motives and everything, if it's not toward God and living for God and the, the hand of God, I want God's hand to be upon everything I do. Amen. I want Him to bless our church. I want Him to bless my home, don't you? Amen. But I've got to allow Him to do these things, right? right. These are things that are priceless. We've been talking about how peaceful it was Wednesday night. Well, we had a good meeting Wednesday night. We had a good meeting the Wednesday night before, right? So if you don't come on Wednesday night, you're missing out. Right. We, we, hey, we've had revival on Wednesday nights, ain't we? Amen. Revival meetings. But just a peaceful place, that's priceless. You know why I believe it's that way? Because everybody's coming, one mind and one accord. We have... Like well, like-minded people, right? Like-minded people means that we ain't coming to, uh, to be seen or to be heard or or to, to you know drag drama in. But we're here to worship the Lord and be in the presence of God and lift His name up and and, and to get help. That's why it's a people got the Spirit of God is welcomed. But when you quench the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God is easily offended, amen, but when, you, when He's offended, then you don't have that peaceful feeling, right? Priceless. The Spirit of God's priceless. Man. That's only, he's the only way we can have church. He's the only way you can get help. He's the only way I can get help. He's the only way lost people can get saved. Spirit of God. Can't buy him. 
Simon tried to, Simon the sorcerer tried to buy. He, he tried to give the disciples money for the, for the Spirit of God, didn't he? For, to, to lay hands on people and, and to do. And they said, don't come with a price. Put your money up. Right? There's no price. There's, there, there's, no, there's no charge for the Lamb of God. There's no charge for, the, for, the, for salvation, for the Spirit of God and the things of God. It's free, but what it costs is me and you is our pride. That's all it'll cost us is our pride. Amen? That's the message. Give her head bowed and every eye closed. Do you need to come and pray today? There's been times in my Christian life I've said, Lord, I've got things way out of proportion. I've got to, my priorities way out of line. And I noticed, I've noticed when I get honest with God and he gets, he, I, I start seeing things, right? I start seeing, I start seeing things change and things happen. Amen. Is there somebody else today? People being honest with God, doing business with God. Amen. You say, I just need to come talk to the Lord today. How about it today?